Hello friends, I welcome you to our ongoing Six Sigma journey and I would like to remind you that we are in the analyze phase of our DMAIC Six Sigma cycle. As a part of analyze phase, we have already talked about hypothesis testing, one tail test, two tail test, hypothesis testing for one population, two population and we have also seen the correlation and regression analysis and model validation for regression analysis. Now, uh, we will advance in our analyze journey and uh, this lecture 34 will help you to appreciate a very very important concept which is widely used in design of experiment and later on this particular concept would be used in the say uh, next coming lectures in the design of experiment and it is one way ANOVA. So, uh, let us begin with a uh, very good inspiring quote, statistics do not speak for themselves by Milton Friedman and this scientist Nobel laureate says that you may manipulate with the facts the way you apply the statistics, but you need to be careful and statistics do not speak on their own. You must try to analyze, you must try to see the wider range applicability of the results and specifically the implications of the proposed recommendations, then only your analysis, your analyze phase will have some importance. So, uh, if you see what we discussed in the last class then we had seen the validation of regression model and as a part of that we had seen autocorrelation, Durbin Watson test, T test, F test for checking the uh, significance of coefficient co uh, of the regression model and pitfalls of regression analysis. Now, in this lecture I would like to help you to appreciate the concept of ANOVA what is the purpose of ANOVA analysis, then we will specifically focus on the concept and example of one way ANOVA and then I will also try to say show some demonstration application of ANOVA one way ANOVA in Minitab software. So, let us see what is uh, analysis of variance and ANOVA. If you just look at the name, you will get a feel that there is something related to variance and I am trying to analyze it as simple as that. So, in a more technical term I would say that ANOVA is an analysis tool typically it is used widely used in statistical inferential analysis and this basically splits the aggregate variability of your data set or inside a data set into two parts. Number one systematic factor, number two random factor and the systematic factor basically have the influence on the given data set and random factor they do not exercise such kind of influence. So, basically this approach helps the analyst tells the analyst if there are any significant differences between the means of three or more independent groups. So, I would like to draw your attention to the point that I am talking about three or more independent groups and we have already seen that you can conduct the hypothesis testing for two population and uh, this can help you to compare the mean of two different population. So, now the question here is that if I can do it for two, for example, let us say you have to compare four mean. Now, for different population, the same way as you did for two population, you can compare the four mean one by one, each pair 4 C 2, 6 pair you can compare using the T test or Z test or if it is a small sample, you can go for T test. Now, what is the need of this new tool? Now, if you recall, we discussed at length that when you are going for inferential analysis, you always accept the risk of committing type 1 and type 2 error. 
So, now here when you are going by t test multiple t test for comparing more than let us say 2 or 3 mean then your type 1 error it gets amplified it increases and this is where what you need you need an approach where simultaneously this different means more than 2 more than 3 can be compared and you can draw the conclusions based on the simultaneous analysis of your data. So, this is where the catch lies and please appreciate this fact very well that I have an option to go for multiple pairwise comparison and conduct the t-test but that will unnecessarily increase my type 1 error of making decision and hence ANOVA analysis helps me to analyze the given situation my data simultaneously and draw the inferential conclusions. Now, before we actually go into the details of ANOVA analysis, let us try to appreciate some of the technical terms. Number one, independent variable, this may be typically called a treatment variable or the classification variable. Then you have treatment variable. So, this is a variable which is controlled or modified by the researcher. Suppose temperature, pressure, then you as a researcher, you as an experimenter have a control over this factor and you can change it, you can vary it. So, for example, in agriculture, the different fertilizers or the different method of cultivations are the treatments. The third one is dependent variable. So, in any experimental design, a dependent variable is the response to the different levels of independent variable. We have seen in regression analysis that you have dependent variable and this dependent variable is influenced by set of independent variables and same applies here that this is typically called the response variable. Then you have factor. So, a factor can be referred as a set of treatment or a single type. In most situation, analyst researcher may be interested in studying more than one factor. So, uh, likewise you have couple of uh, terms to be appreciated and this would be useful in the subsequent phase improve also when we will talk about the design of experiment. So, let us try to appreciate the concept which we want to focus in this particular lecture. This is one way analysis of variance and what exactly it means when I say one way because analysis of variance is clear what does it mean and what is the purpose but when I say one way what does it mean. So, here I am interested to evaluate the difference among the means of three or more groups. So, I am interested in a particular factor particular variable and I am just trying to compare the mean of for that particular factor maybe for more than two more than three groups. So, just try to see that accident rate for first, second and third shift. So, how many accidents are taking place? I may analyze the data. I may uh, say collect the data for two years and then I can use this data to analyze that whether the number of accidents on an average taking place in first shift are really different than second shift and same way third shift or all the three are same. So, there are many factors as you can understand alertness of the worker, supervising, supervision level, then uh, say uh, kind of uh, skills available in the different shifts that may be the case. So, this may have impact on the accident rate, but I want to analyze this fact statistically and I would like to compare the average accident rates in three means over a period of 2 years or 3 years using the ANOVA analysis. Similar way you can think about expected mileage for 5 brands of tires. For example, you are purchasing MRF, Apollo or uh, C8 and many other brands you have JK tire. Now, let us say I want to see that whether there is a difference statistically significant difference in the average mileage or life of each particular brand tire or it is more or less same. So, again this is a fit case 
for conducting ANOVA analysis and analyzing the data simultaneously, variability simultaneously and drawing the say statistical conclusion. So, now see the assumptions it is very important to remind you that statistical analysis is always based on certain assumptions and if these assumptions are not respected or validated then your analysis will not have much value. So, here my fundamental assumption is that populations are normally distributed. So, suppose I have mu 1, mu 2, mu 3, mu 4, mu 5 to be compared coming from different population then my all the populations they are normally distributed. Then populations have equal variances. So, there is uh, no funnel I have shown you in the last lecture there is no funnel kind of uh, say uh, distribution of the error and my populations have equal variances samples are randomly and independently drawn there is no subjectivity bias when I draw the sample for the purpose of my analysis. Now, just see this that when I say I want to compare the mean of different coming from different population my null hypothesis says that mu 1 is equal to mu 2 is equal to mu 3 up to mu c and if the null hypothesis is not true then at least one of the mean is different there is a factor effect available. So, then I will say my alternate and this alternate can be represented like this at least one of the mean is different. So, here mu 2 is not equal to mu 3 or you may have a situation that your mu 1, mu 2 and mu 3 they all 3 are not equal. So, this is uh, how I formulate the hypothesis null and alternative for my ANOVA analysis. Now, let us try to see what is the mechanism and what exactly ANOVA analysis does. So, my ANOVA analysis typically will partition the variation into two part SST is equal to SSA plus SSW when I say SST this means total variation. So, it is basically total sum of square I have already introduced you to the uh, concept as well as equation of sum of square. So, SST is total sum of square total variation SSA sum of square among groups. So, you have drawn the sample from different population and now you have the groups available. So, I would like to compare the variability among the groups and this is my say SSA. Now, I would also like to compare or check the variability within the group. So, suppose you have drawn a sample from population 1 then this sample will have some variability within the group and this is typically called within group variation. So, please see that I have total variation, I have among group variation and I have within group variation. So, these are the fundamental uh, say concepts in my ANOVA analysis. Now, let us try to see that what exactly we do and how we conduct the ANOVA analysis. So, we have SST is equal to SSA plus SSW I am just repeating because this is the most important concept. Total variation is the aggregate variation of the individual data value across the various factor levels that is called SST. Among group variation, this is variation among factor sample means and within group variation, variation that exists among the data within a particular factor level or group, this is called SSW. Now, let us try to appreciate the little mathematics and how we can uh, express the SST, SSA, SSW so that we can compute this uh, various sum of squares and then conduct the inferential analysis using ANOVA. So, SST is uh, basically sigma j is equal to 1 to c, sigma i is equal to 1 to n j, x i j minus x double bar square. So, SST is total sum of square, C is the number of groups or levels that is why you will see that the first uh, this thing is sigma j is equal to 1 to C and j is number of observations in a group that is j. So, this is the second term and 
as I have i j, obviously I have to define i and j both. So, x i j is the i th observation from group j. So, suppose you have group number 1, group number 2, group number 3 and suppose I say that 1, 3 it means the first observation in group number 3 that is the jth group. x double bar is my grand mean. So, these are the basic terms uh, uh, we, we try to define in uh, my SST. Now, just try to visualize. So, that will give you a very good idea and interest in understanding the SST. So, I compute my SST like this. I have just expanded my expression that x 1 1 minus x double bar whole square plus x 1 2 minus x double bar whole square plus dash 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 plus x c and c minus x double bar whole square. So, now if you see the picture, if you see the overall situation, you have response x and let us say you have group 1, you have group 2 and you have group 3. So, each particular group will have some data value, each particular group will have some data set and this is say my overall say representation for which I would like to conduct the ANOVA analysis. So, here you have x double bar and if you see the expression, let us try to take this one x 1 1 minus x double bar. So, I have reading 1, 2 and 3 in group 1. So, what is the difference between this and this, this and this, this and this, this is exactly on the line with respect to x double bar that will say become my x 1 1 minus x double bar similar way x 1 2 minus x double bar x 1 3 minus x double bar whole square. Then you will take the second group, third group and each individual observation with respect to grand mean x double bar will be compared squared in order to find the total sum of square that is SST. So, with this uh, understanding you must have appreciated what is SST. Now, let us come to SSA. So, SSA is expressed as sigma j is equal to 1 to c and j x j bar minus x double bar whole square. So, SSA is sum of square among group A stands for among. So, I have group 1, group 2, group 3 and I want to compare the variability among the groups. So, it is sum of square among the groups c is the number of groups or labels n j is sample size from the group j, x j is sample mean from group j and x double bar as you know it is the grand mean, mean of all the data values in the uh, say analysis. Uh, so, also let us try to see uh, that how this can be uh, visualized, it would give you the better picture. So, I want to take x 1 bar minus x double bar square, x 2 bar minus x double bar square. It is very simple. For each particular group, you find the average value that is the x 1 bar. For group 2, I have x 2 bar. For group 3, I have x 3 bar and take the difference with respect to x double bar, square it, multiply it with respective say sample size, group size because each group may have different data point number of uh, say units and you get the SSA that is sum of square among the group or variability among the group. So, now uh, let us try to see that how can I find another term which is derived from SSA and it is basically mean square among group MSA. So, I can refer it like this that variation due to difference among group. So, you have mu i and mu j. So, there is a difference and I am capturing is uh, this difference is through SSA variability and I can find another term derived term that is MSA and the standard expression for a MSA is say your sum of square divided by degree of freedom. So, this applies uh, in general for whatever MSA or other you want to find, MSA is equal to SSA divided by C minus 1. In general, it is sum of square divided by degree of freedom. So, uh, we have 
now msa and i have the expression which is like this that is ssw so we have already seen sst ssa and now the term which is left is ssw so ssw stands for variability within the group i have let us say five data point in a group or 10 data point in a group now within this group among the data point what is the variability so i would like to see it with respect to xj bar so here your xij is basically individual observation and you have xj bar this xj bar is sample mean from group j so for each group i will find the mean value called xj bar and each particular observation xij will be say checked or will be say the difference will be seen with respect to xj bar i will square it so i get ssw so this is the third term in my anova analysis and uh, i would once again like to say see it that what does it mean so it means summing the variation within each group and then adding the overall groups so ssw is this and i can divide ssw by degree of freedom n minus c so you will get say mean square within and this will be my expression for msw so just uh, to help you uh, you can find this very easily you have total degree of freedom is equal to degree of freedom associated with among as well as degree of freedom associated with within so you have degree of freedom for total degree of freedom among degree of freedom within just try to put the values of total degree of freedom then you already know the degree of freedom say among we have we have taken it say in the previous slide then you will get the degree of freedom within so this is how you uh, can easily say find the value of degree of freedom that is n minus c uh, here for within now just try to appreciate how does it look like when i say ssw so ssw you can see that i want to take the difference between x11 minus x1 bar whole square this means that i have the data point in a particular group and x11 minus x1 bar means this particular reading minus x1 bar then x12 it means the group 1 second reading x12 i will have with respect to x1 uh, x21 sorry x1 bar x2 uh, x31 x1 bar similar way you can take it for this that x12 minus x2 bar x12 minus x2 bar and so on so i would like to take the difference between the individual reading within a particular group with respect to say mean of that particular group and this will give me variability within the group typically called as ssw so finally i have this uh, equations as a summary msa is equal to ssa divided by c minus 1 msw is equal to ssw divided by n minus c mst is equal to sst divided by n minus 1 and as i mentioned that n minus 1 is the total c minus 1 is among within if you just equate total is equal to among plus within so n minus 1 is total is equal to among is c minus 1 plus within you will get the degree of freedom n minus c this will get cancelled out so n minus c for msw so this is uh, very simple to find the degree of freedom now finally my anova table will look like this please understand that we always express final results of ANOVA analysis in a table and this table whatever book you may refer more or less it is standard also when you uh, say analyze your data using any software the pattern of this particular table is standard and it looks like this that you have source of variation 
So, there could be variability among group, there could be variability within group and there could be total variability. You have degree of freedom for each one, you have sum of square among sum of square within sum of square total. You can divide this by degree of freedom and you get the MSA and MSW. Now, you are interested to analyze the uh, hypothesis using the ANOVA analysis for more than 2 or 3 population. So, you would say that whether the mean coming from 2 to through population are same or different. So, obviously, I need to have the statistics to check my claim at a given level of alpha. So, here my statistic is F statistic MSA divided by MSW and I can just take the ratio of these two find the calculated value of F stat compare it with the critical value the rest of the procedure for hypothesis testing remains same as we discussed in the previous lectures. So, let us try to appreciate uh, with the help of some example said basically I want to do this. I want to compare the mean of say more than 2 or 3 population and I want to say that at least 2 population means are different. So, app statistic is MSA divided by MSW this is the degree of freedom. Now, uh, rule is very simple I have the alpha level of significance may be 0 0.05, 0 0.1 you have the F alpha which is the uh, critical value you obtain from the given level of alpha from the table and if it falls in this region you reject the null hypothesis it means you say that your means are different at least one of the mean is different and here you do not reject the null hypothesis. So, this is typically my app distribution which if you have to refer the table it, it will uh, require degree of freedom 1, degree of freedom 2 and then you can find the F value critical value for the given level of alpha. Now, let us try to see the example that will make the idea very clear. So, the example is like this uh, you are a quality manager and you want to see the level of quality number of defectives produced in shift 1, shift 2 and shift 3 you have collected the data over a period of 5 years and let us say you have taken particular data for shift 1, shift 2 and shift 3 and you want to analyze based on this that whether number of defective or the defectives in shift 1 mu 1 is equal to shift 2 mu 2 is equal to shift 3 mu 3 or they are not equal. So, this is what I want to check using the ANOVA analysis. So, let us try to see the solution I will compute x 1 bar, x 1 bar, x 2 bar then x 3 bar and I have x double bar this is n 1 is equal to 5, 5 and 5, n is equal to 15, c is equal to 3. So, now you can very well understand what does I mean. So, this is my x 1 bar, this is my x 2 bar, this is my x 3 bar. So, here 3 different shifts can be seen as 3 different groups and I have the data set in each particular group means for each particular shift. This I want to analyze simultaneously using my ANOVA analysis and you can see that I have computed SSA using the expressions we have already discussed SSW this is my ratio to find the calculated value of the app statistic and this comes out to be 25.275. Now, I am selecting or in general you go by alpha is equal to 0 0.05 the corresponding value is f alpha from the table for given degree of freedoms is the so you have df1 and df2. So, for alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and df1 is equal to 2 df2 is equal to 12 I have f alpha is equal to 3.89. So, this will make the uh, thing very clear crystal clear my app state is greater than this. So, this is in the rejection region and what I would say that reject null hypothesis at alpha 0 0.05 and there is an evidence that at least one mu j differs from the rest. It means yes statistically there is a significant evidence to say 
that defectives produced in shift 1, shift 2 and shift 3 are not equal, there are some causes, there are some reasons that one of the shift has may be higher or lower defectives. So, uh, this is how you can apply ANOVA. You can also uh, see the output in Excel. We will see also in Minitab, more or less you will find similar kind of table constituting sources of variation, degree of freedom, sum of square, mean sum of square and the computed value of F statistic. Now, let us try to see the another test which basically helps me to little bit go into detail of my ANOVA analysis. When I say null hypothesis is rejected at a given level of significance, it means at least one of the mean for the given level of significance is not equal. Now, this does not end the story. I want to really figure out that whether the example we have discussed, whether it is shift 1 and 2 or shift 1 and 3 or shift 2 and 3. Yes, I want to check that which particular two mean are not really equal, then the situation is described like this that just see here mu 1 and mu 2 they are matching, but mu 3 is not matching. It could be otherwise mu 1 and mu 3 are matching, mu t is not matching. I want to test it using some uh, say scientific procedure and this procedure is called Tucky Kramer procedure. So, let us try to see for the example we are discussing and what I will do, I have the standardized uh, expression for critical range which is used for Tucky Kramer test, Kramer test. And what I need to find, I have MSW, I know NJ, I know NJ dash. So, NJ and NJ dash sample sizes from group J and J dash. Here you have shift 1, 2 and 3. Now, you need to have the value of Q alpha. So, this value of Q alpha is basically upper tail critical value from student dice range distribution with C and N minus C degree of freedom. So, when you will refer the suggested textbook, you will find this kind of table in the appendix and you can take the value of Q alpha for the given level of significance. So, here I can apply this for my example shift 1, shift 2 and shift 3 and what I have found that x1 bar minus x2 bar, x2 bar minus x3 bar, x2 bar minus x3 bar, these are basically the differences in this mean of each particular group and I have obtained the value of Q alpha 3.77 for C is equal to 3 because I have 3 shifts to compare and N minus C that is 12 degree of freedom, it is 3.77. Now, this 3.77 will act as a critical value, comparison value. I will compare each particular difference with Q alpha and I will try to see whether it is greater than or it is less than and if let us say this particular difference of I, I am putting this Q alpha, I can just go back. Uh, I am putting this Q alpha, I will not directly compare, I will put this Q alpha into the expression we have discussed for Tucky Kramer test and this expression is basically this. So, I am putting the value of Q alpha here. So, this will give me critical range. So, what I am getting is 16.285. Now, I will compare each difference with 16.285 and here all the absolute mean differences are greater than critical range. Therefore, there is a significant difference between each pair of mean at 5 percent level of significance. You can say that defectives in shift 1, defectives in shift 2 and defectives in shift 3 are not equal and say there is some evidence that there is a difference in the say defect rate per shift. So, with 95 percent confidence we can conclude that number of defect 1 a shift in shift 1 is greater than shift 2 and 3 in shift 2 it is greater than shift 3 and so on. So, there are certain anoma assumptions that need to be checked. We will quickly try to appreciate this. So, randomness and independence, we have done such kind of analysis in the previous lecture that is correlation and regression, normality, homogeneity of the variance. So, my first uh, assumption is about uh, variances are equal, 
I can apply the Levin's test and check that whether my variances are equal or not. So, my null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis for Levin's test says that null is sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square is equal to sigma 3 square and if not then it is my alternate hypothesis. So, let us try to see for the same example I am taking the same data shift 1, shift 2, shift 3 this is the median I have some uh, say uh, I, I have just converted my data by subtracting say this particular value uh, 251 minus 237 or each value from this particular and I am just taking the positive values. So, you will get the calculated absolute differences I am taking only the positive value. Now, you try to see the p value specific to this analysis between group within group this is the consolidated data and you get the p value 0 0.912. So, now I think you are comfortable in interpreting p value. So, p value is greater than 0 0.05. So, there is insufficient evidence of a difference in the variances. So, I can say the assumption about equal variances is satisfied and whatever ANOVA analysis I have done is true. So, this is the first thing that I can check. Now, I have one way ANOVA analysis in Minitab and uh, you have let us say the data set like this. You are manufacturing the integrated circuits and there is a plasma etching process engineer is interested in investigating the relationship between RF power setting and the each rate and interested in a particular gas C2F gap 0.8 and wants to test 4 level of RF power 160, 180, 200 and 220. So, experiment is replicated 5 times. So, you have this data set available. Now, you just put this data set into your newly opened Minitab project or file and you have the run number, power level, each rate. So, this you can insert very easily. Then you can also put it in an unstacked manner. So, this is the unstacked manner as usual you have the data available. So, for power 160 this is one group you have this data. For power 180 group 2 you have this data power 200. So, this data is basically the etching rate and you can put it in the unstacked manner and also analyze it. So, now the steps are very simple. You go to ANOVA basically in your stat module, go to one way and then you uh, try to conduct the ANOVA analysis and you put response variable factor here is power level which you are changing and also try to get all the graphs so that you can really validate your ANOVA model, press OK and you will have the output available. So, basically you get first thing that whether your claim is true or not. So, P is 0 0.000. So, this is less than 0 0.05. So, this says that I am in the rejection region. I reject the null hypothesis. So, itching rate for different power setting is not equal. There is a difference. Now, you can have other outputs from Minitab like this normality plot more or less the line which you see here is passing through the data set and I can say that my normality assumption is satisfied. So, you are putting the residual versus percentage on the normality plot. You have the equal variance constant variance assumption. You have independence no particular trend is observed. You can also check your box plot and typically see the distribution of the itching rate. So, this kind of plots you will get when you conduct the ANOVA analysis. Before I end as a usual practice let me float couple of think it. ANOVA statistically compares fill in the blank what is the utility of Levin's test? Null hypothesis for ANOVA is that all means are not equal true or false just revisit and what are the key steps for conducting? ANOVA analysis in Minitab. So, try to digest the content properly and appreciate the various concepts in detail. Refer these references if you have any particular difficulty and I hope the idea would be clear. So, as a summary I would say that ANOVA is a statistical method used 
to test the differences, check the variability within and among and typically check that two or more mean whether they are equal or not, two or more population they are equal or not. So, it is used to test general differences rather than specific differences among the means. So, thank you very much for your interest in learning the concept of ANOVA and typically one way ANOVA. We will keep discussing the various topics as a part of our ongoing phase that is the analyze phase in DMAIC cycle till that time keep revising enjoy be with me.